Hey guys, welcome back to our annual upload. This video will go over abiotic factors and how they may impact reproduction, illustrate the difference between asexual and sexual reproduction, go over bryophytes, pteridophytes, gymnosperms and angiosperms, and the structure of a flower. The first part of our video will be describing five abiotic factors needed by plants to survive and reproduce. The first one is aspect. Depending on which side of the mountain you're facing, you'll get more or less sunlight. In the southern hemisphere, if you're facing north, you'll get more sunlight than a plant facing south and vice versa for the northern hemisphere. The second factor is the pH of the soil. Certain pH levels of soil favour certain plants, and if the pH level of the soil a plant is growing in is too high or low, the plant cannot grow properly or survive. Our third abiotic factor is wind, as wind helps plants to reproduce if they have spores and it also helps with transpiration. Our penultimate factor is water. Water helps plants to both grow and reproduce as it is needed for photosynthesis. A well-balanced amount of water for the plant equals an optimal rate of photosynthesis, though too much or too little water could lead to the death of the plant. Our fifth and final factor is humidity, as a higher percentage of humidity leads to a lower rate of transpiration, which means that a plant can retain more water. The second part of our video will go over the difference between sexual and asexual reproduction, and which is more beneficial in changing environments. Asexual reproduction is when one single organism can produce its own offspring, as it does not involve the fusion of gametes. Sexual reproduction is when two different organisms of the same species fuse their gametes together. Sexual reproduction would be more effective in changing conditions as there is more genetic variation. This next section will go over bryophytes, pteridophytes, gymnosperms and angiosperms. Bryophytes, a non-vascular plant, an example being moss, rely heavily on water for reproduction. Bryophytes live in areas of high moisture and low sunlight levels such as ponds and rivers. They produce spores and that is how they reproduce. They do not have true roots or stems. Pteridophytes, a vascular plant, an example being ferns, also rely on water for reproduction, though not as much as bryophytes. The majority of pteridophytes live in areas of high moisture and low sunlight, such as ponds and rivers. They reproduce via spores called sori, which grow on the underside of the leaves so that when they are heavy enough, they fall into the soil easily. They have true roots and stems. Gymnosperms, a vascular plant, an example being a cycad, rely heavily on animals like birds or insects for reproduction. Gymnosperms live on slopes, away from water, and in direct sunlight. They produce cones called naked seeds, and they can either be monoecious or dioecious. They do have true roots and stems. Our final group of plants is angiosperms, a vascular plant, an example being proteus. They rely on animals like birds or insects for reproduction. Angiosperms live in conditions with high acidic soil that don't require a lot of nutrients and they need a lot of sunlight. They produce seeds which are found inside of the fruit that they produce. They do have true roots and stems. The flower consists of two main parts, the first part being the stamen, the other being the pistil. The pistil is the female part of the plant, which consists of the stigma, pollen tube, style, petal, ovary and ovule, whereas the stamen is the male part of the plant, which consists of the anther and the filament. Other parts of the plant, not in the female or male part, are the sepal, receptacle and peduncle. The most important part of the male reproductive organ is the anther, as this is where the pollen, which is where the male gamete is encapsulated, is produced, and the duty of the filament, the other part of the stamen, is to support this anther. The gamete found in the pollen is what is used to fertilize the ovules, the female gamete. The stigma is where the pollen germinates and the pollen tube transports the male gamete from the pollen grain. The style acts as a connector between the stigma and the ovary. The ovary contains the ovules and the ovules will turn into seeds upon fertilization and it will then mature into a fruit. The petal's main job is to attract pollinators, and the most effective way of doing this is having petals with bright colours.